next speaker is David Stevenson. He is the director for the Center, uh, Center for Energy Environmental Policy at the Caesar Rodney Institute, a nonprofit organization based in Delaware. Dave has published over 150 analytic studies, including major studies on the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative, the EPA Clean Power Plan, electric grid reliability, the public policy drivers of energy costs, offshore wind, and many more. Dave has been a leader on energy and environmental policy in the State Policy Network and has served on President Trump's Environmental Protection Agency transition team and has become a source for national energy and environmental issues. All right, welcome to the stage, David Stevenson. Thank you, Craig. Thank you, Heartland, for inviting me to speak. And thank you all for being here. It's getting late in the day. I try to make this as short as possible, painless as possible. Uh, my slides have been lost. Now, I have a working theory as to why they are lost. Uh, I sent them over the internet to Jim Lakely, and I think the federal government is so concerned about the work I'm doing opposing offshore wind that they got sucked out of the internet and they've disappeared. So that's my working theory. I want to tell you uh, a little bit about offshore wind and then we'll get into the, uh, the, the effects on the whales. Uh, during the Bush administration, a, a bill was passed uh, to create the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management to create lease areas for offshore oil and gas and for offshore wind. Uh, that agency has the, uh, the, the, they have to decide on where the leases will go. They have to approve the environmental impact statements uh, to, to uh, build the projects. Now, when they talk about an environmental impact statement, just so you know, there's 25 different things that include things like, that you might not think about, like lost economy, lost tourism and the effects on the economy, uh, radar effects and navigation effects. So th this is a very broad vision of what environmental impact statements are. Now, what the first thing that Boehm had to do was establish lease areas. And in, in doing that, they, they went through a process with public input, although not very many people were paying attention. Uh, they were supposed to do an environmental impact statement uh, when the leases were proposed and skip that step. And I'll tell you a little bit about uh, the effects of that. There's actually a lawsuit over that issue out of New Jersey. Um, after that, they had leases, public leases, competitive leases, so that uh, developers could, could buy the leases. The first ones went pretty cheaply. They got more expensive with time. After that, uh, the developers submitted construction and operations plans. Those plans had to be approved by Boehm as complete. Then they start with a, what's called a draft environmental impact statement. It's the first look. They get public comments again. Uh, and once again, the public comments are ignored, of course. Uh, then they do a final impact statement more public comments to be ignored, and then they come up with a record of decision and, and approve the projects. So it's a long process. It's been going on. Uh, Bowen was created in about 2007. Uh, we just got the first project approved off of Nantucket. It's called Vineyard Wind. Uh, it was approved uh, at, I think, the end of 2021. So <clears throat> we, we go through these projects and we look for uh, what did they miss? And they missed a lot of stuff. But we're gonna, we're gonna mainly talk about the North Atlantic right whale. Now, this is uh, a large whale. Like, like when you see the photographs uh, of whales and everybody loves them, uh, these are 50,000 pound animals. Uh, often it'll be a female with uh, a calf and the cutest pictures you can imagine. The right whale, the North Atlantic right whale, eats zooplankton, which are small marine animals near the surface. They will form clusters, and the whales use sonar to find those clusters of potential food. 
They also use uh, noise. They, they communicate with, with uh, sounds. They navigate with sound. They uh, uh, can find the, their, uh, they can look for uh, prey, but they can also look for predators. So everything they do involves sound. Their vision is not that great. And, and sound travels for a little, very long distance. So they also, they migrate seasonally. So right now, they're gathering um, in a, which the, the, the federal government has established as a critical habitat area off of North and South Carolina, where the calves are born. Uh, later, most of the summer, they are up in uh, off Nantucket and uh, Martha's Vineyard, where they're feeding and uh, just getting healthy and, and uh, having sex so that they can then go south again uh, to, to, to calve. The, the females um, have calves about every uh, third year if they're healthy. So uh, while that is the pattern, there is also, uh, they're moving around all during the year. And when the, 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 the developers of the offshore wind projects will submit their comments to, to BOEM, it is, it is stated right in the, uh, the statements that the whales are common in the lease areas year round. They're more common at certain times, but they're there all year. So I'm gonna, since I don't have charts, I'm gonna skip through the pages here, make sure I don't miss anything. So, so right now, the North Atlantic right whale is considered critically endangered. They were almost hunted to death. The reason they're called right whales is because they feed on the surface. They're on the surface a lot. They're easy to find for the hunters. Uh, when they die, they've got so much blubber and oil, they float. They don't sink. So they were the right whales to, to catch. Right now, we're down to 340 uh, animals left. Uh, there were 400 in 2019, 2016 there were about 500, which had actually been uh, a little bit of a growth in, in the population. There's only 79 breeding females at this point. So uh, the responsibility for the whale's safety is rests with the National Marine Fisheries uh, Service, which is part of NOAA. Within that group, uh, there is a, man, a mammal uh, uh, protection service that, that puts together the science on, that, on the whales. And they have determined that if man kills 0.7 whales, a little bit less than one whale a year, this mammal will go extinct. It's as simple as that. Uh, the leading cause of death is vessel strikes. Now, there's occasionally a, an entanglement in fishing gear or ropes, uh, but there hasn't been, my understanding is there's not been a death of one of these whales since uh, for the last 17 years for that reason. So when they die, it's because of uh, uh, vessel strikes. So uh, the, the federal government has actually created uh, a large part of the year for large, larger vessels a 10 knot speed limit. Uh, because they, they calculated that uh, the whale might survive a, a slower hit or get out of the way. So they've created this 10 knot, uh, 10 knot uh, limit. So as we talked about, no, you know, the, the whales survive with noise. They, they make the noises to, live, to survive. Well, you're gonna get very loud noises at three different stages. One is, when you're doing seismic testing to look at what's under the mud out in the ocean, where you're gonna put these uh, turbines, uh, they're loud noises, they can be a problem. Uh, second time is during construction, you're putting monopoles 100 feet down in the mud, so you wanna know what's under, and you're pile driving, and that can affect the whales. More recently, there's been a discussion about the, the noise, the operating noise, and, and this is one that uh, Boehm tried to ignore. Uh, I, I, I've been keeping up, done about five different uh, envir draft environmental impact statements, and you can see the progress of, of things going on. First of all, Boehm is mainly cutting and pasting at this point to make them, to get them out faster. But uh, they initially tried to ignore 
a study by acoustical engineers that was published in the acoustical journal that was estimating the size of these huge turbines. And I'm telling you, we're talking about 850 to 1,050 feet tall. These things are immense, size of the Eiffel Tower, size of the tallest buildings in New York City. And of course, the breadth is similar because you've got a, a, a circumference being swept. So the biggest turbines that are built right now and out in the ocean are about 600 feet tall. Uh, they're six megawatt uh, turbines. The ones they're planning are 12, 15, and 20 megawatt. They're up to this almost twice as tall. And it turns out the noise goes up as they get larger. Well, NOAA has set uh, standards for how much noise the, the animals can take. So at 120 decibels, uh, uh, it, it becomes a harassment for the whales. They will try to leave an area that has that much sound. At 160 decibels, it'll damage the, the whale's hearing and it will probably lead to mortality. If they can't hear, they can't function. So to put this, in, this is a logarithmic scale. So if you go from 120 decibels to 130 decibels, it's 10 times louder. So imagine what happens at, by the time you're at 160. Well, these acoustical engineers figured out that they're estimating that these turbines, large turbines, will be up to over 170 decibels. And sound goes down with distance. So at nine-tenths of a mile, it's down to the 120 number. But then the, the spacing of the turbines is a mile apart, so you've got these overlapping sound patterns. So the entire lease area will probably be a, a threatening, um, threatening to the whales. So the big problem with this is you have, we have 25 different leases that are being considered right now. They make up a huge area. This is the one slide I wish I could show you where all the leases are. It's bigger than the state of Connecticut if you put them all together. It's a huge area we're talking about. And uh, if, if you look at them, a lot of them are they're shaped like an arrow. And the reason is because they are sandwiched in between major, major shipping channels. So if you get harassed whales in the lease area, they're going to move out into the shipping channel. Well, where are they going to get hit by vessels in the shipping channel? Uh, the other problem that you wind up with is uh, uh, a German study that was just completed, I mean, literally a month ago, uh, is showing that there's a wake effect when you have, you know, you'll, you'll have a, a lease area that might have up to 200 turbines in it, step one mile by one mile by one mile. It creates an effect called the wake effect. That wake effect uh, mixes the water, stratifies the water, and what that does is reduces, uh, according to this German study, oxygen co content by 10%. And what that does is it lowers the number of zooplankton, and the stratification spreads the zooplankton out. The whales only feed when there's a concentrated zooplankton source. So what happens is the whales have to go further away to find food, and when they do that, they tend to get thinner. A thinner whale is, is less likely to calve. They're not gonna have a baby. So you've got all these factors working in here to impact the whales, and, and Baum is basically, they, with, with all of this knowledge, they still approve the project off of Nantucket. And it's not just the whale problem. We've got other problems as well. How am I doing on time, uh, Greg? Okay. Um, so there's other problems. So Boehm uses a scale. They have no impact, negligible impact, moderate impact, major impact. Major impact means it's going to have a major impact. So for example, uh, commercial fishing in these lease areas. Uh, Bohm literally says, commercial fishermen will abandon these lease areas, that there's too much threat of t uh, lost uh, equip fishing equipment, uh, vessel strikes, 
and uh, insurance rates going up if they fish in these leases. So they're, they're going to abandon this. So this is a major impact, and there's no mitigation, but yet Baum ignores it. One of the reasons they ignore it is if you look at the first page of the environmental impact statement, it says, the climate crisis is so bad, and President Biden has given us an executive order, we're going to make this happen. And they, they ignore all the major impacts. So besides losing the commercial fishing, uh, the ma next major impact is there's going to be more vessel collisions. And the Coast Guard is not going to be able to do the normal search and rescue. And, they, and Baum literally says, this is going to result in more human deaths. You're going to do this anyway? This is ridiculous. I, it, it just blows your mind. Um, some of the radar studies are saying it could affect uh, military uh, 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 actions. And for small vessels, it's going to be extremely difficult. You know, they don't realize what these fishermen are going through. You're coming back at night in a storm or in a fog. There are, uh, the turbines create a shadow effect where, uh, for example, off of Block Island, there's five turbines. I've seen radar, pictures of the radar screens. It looks like there's 15 or that there's a circle of them uh, because of this uh, shadow effect. And you know, how are you supposed to navigate in a, on a really crappy night? So you're gonna have, you know, that's one of the reasons you have more, more vessels getting, getting hit. So all these major impacts and, and Boehm just keeps going on. So what we're doing, I, I created a national coalition from North Carolina to Maine and out to uh, Jason Hayes' uh, Mackinac Center for the Great Lakes. And what we're doing is we're making sure that public comments are made uh, on every project because you need, to have, you need to have made public comments to have standing in a lawsuit. Uh, and we've got groups that live in each of these areas, off, off the coast of each of these areas, so you'll have standing. And the Endangered Species Act has a, has a very much lower standard uh, for, for establishing standings. So this, this issue of the whales is probably the, one of the major issues that's going to wind up winding up in court. January 21st, 4th, uh, the first lawsuit was heard in the uh, Boston District Court. The judge really focused on the endangered species issue and wasn't, didn't seem as interested in the other issues. So uh, we were thinking it's going to go in that direction. Um, so uh, one of the things we've done, we, we created the American Coalition for Ocean Protection. That's the kind of the parent group of, of this uh, coalition. We created the Ocean Defense, uh, Ocean Environment Legal Defense Fund. So uh, oceanlegaldefense.org, if you want to donate, we're raising money to prepare for, these, these lawsuits are going to be very expensive, so send some donations in, we can use them. Uh, so with that, I will turn it over to our next speaker. Thank you.